Okay, just carrying on now to finish up with uh, Crystal Reports demo. I just want to go back to uh, presentation here for a sec. So create the data set and add the Crystal Report. We've done that. Using the report wizard, select the project data and the ADO.NET data sets. We've done that. We've, we've picked the tables. We've got some report grouping. Uh, everything else just stayed the same. We've covered the fact that there's no preview. Uh, now we've got to add a report viewer to the form and, and write some code. There's a couple other things we've got to do too. Remember some of the hoops that we have to jump through. So, you know, first I've got to, I've got to modify the uh, .NET framework. Uh, setting the target framework to 4, not 4.5 and not 4 client. And I've got to turn on this mixed mode tag. Uh, so I'm just going to do that right now. So first things first, I'm going to go up here to the project first. And go to the project properties and see what we've got. So yeah, I'm set, I'm set by default because I'm in 2012 to .NET Framework 4.5. You might see yours if you're in 2010, you might see it sitting at, at 4.5 or 4 client. Uh, you want to go .NET Framework 4. And it's going to give you this warning. It's like, yeah, I'm sure. The other thing that I've noticed uh, when I was playing around with this, and this uh, you might find this with 2012. I did not find this with tw Visual Studio 2010. The um, under the Build tab, and this of course is a C Sharp application. On the Build tab, and it, I think it's Compile and VB is what you're looking for. The platform target. For some reason, mine is set default to any CPU. I've you have to actually set that and and in my case in the 64-bit system it's x86 so I've got that uh, x86 I've got my dotnet framework 4 I'll just save all this I'm just gonna build it while I'm while I'm at it too here we go I'm gonna close this the other thing I have to do is over here the app config file so you'll see that the app and config is actually picked up my versioning here um, but also now let's just see here we go I've got this startup tag so that's where I, I insert that little bit uh, on the legacy version 2 legacy so I just kinda I just copied that from the PowerPoint slide and pasted it in and I've put it there for you to do the same thing um, so you shouldn't have any problem with that all you have to do is remember to do it uh, you'll get a DLL error on which one? If you leave this one out, you'll get a DLL error. In other words, it doesn't recognize the the report or the report viewer. Uh, you'll actually get uh, runtime errors. No, it actually will not run. Uh, you'll get this this funny error about uh, uh, the debug uh, not being able to be written if you don't set the framework and the platform type appropriately. So you've got to make sure you do those as well. So I'll close that. The only other thing left to do here to get this thing ready for code is to actually attach a report viewer. So uh, down here, I'm in the toolbox now. If I go to reporting, I've got this control, the crystal report viewer. And you might remember from the first video we looked at this thing that had all this cool stuff built into it. Well, there it is. It's it's done. It's that it's that challenging <laughs> to add a Crystal Reports viewer to your project. Uh, I'm going to open the properties window, and make sure everything's named properly. So we go up here. We'll call this. Uh, So that's ready to go. There is no code behind here. I just double click the form to get my form load initiated. Um, I'm going to switch over now though because I'm, I'm going to give you these templates. So let's look at one. Here's a VB report. So there's my report designer. This is my good friend Anita Martini. There's my form. It's got the report viewer in it. The report viewer itself has this uh, report source, which, you know what, there's there's stuff in there, but you're not going to set it. You're actually going to set this at runtime. So let's take a look in behind here. Uh, just double click this form and take myself to the form load. I'm going to give you this code. This is the code you're going to need for assignment eight. 
and it's also going to help you out with uh, the perfect crease case. Uh, so there's lots in here. Some of this should be review. Some of it might be new to you. Um, taking a look at this. So, ooh, oh, I don't like the naming in this. When was this? Oh, yeah, this was last year. Yeah. So uh, looking at the data set, we've declared a data set, a couple table adapters. Uh, we've declared those sort of at the module level. And then inside the form load, I've declared a new object a products report. I don't know why it was called products report. Uh, I actually call, I'm going to change the name of this. Customer invoices report. There we go. As a new customers report. Uh, there's my data set. I've got a customers table adapter. Uh, the invoices table adapter now being a, instantiated. And I've got a couple fill methods. I then can say, okay, my, my report, my runtime report, I'm going to set the data source to this current data source, and the report viewer dot report source is going to come from that report. So the crystal report template, this guy over here, feeds the report source of the viewer. All of this, of course, is going to be enclosed inside of a try catch and and I'm not sure if Bill when you were in VB if he covered try catch for for data connections and, and creating data objects but always a good form and I'm expecting that you will do this for your application for for Roman and for assignment 8 enclose any sort of data uh, object creation instantiation inside a try catch to catch any uh, specific database errors that might be tossed uh, if for no other reason for development purposes to help you debug while you're developing this thing. I've got a try catch. This is VB, so VB syntax. And I send a little message box that just takes the message, whatever the, the exception is, and throws that out there. So there's your viewer again. It's loading. So there's customer invoices by Anita Martini. A little bit different, not quite as pretty as the one that we saw earlier by a student. But uh, same idea. So I'm just going to close that and uh, stop the application. I move that guy out of the way. This is an extension of the, the one that I started. This is a C-sharp application. So uh, down here, same idea, right? Slightly different syntax. We're in C-sharp, so it's the world of braces and, and semicolons, but that's all right. I've got some, some declarations, some data object declarations, which are different in C-sharp than they are in VB. And I realized that you wouldn't have handled data yet in C-sharp. Very similar declarations, and, and it's up to you, you know, for this assignment and for the reports uh, uh, application for perfect crease. You can use C-sharp or VB. I will leave that to you, and in the case of the, the perfect crease case, I'll leave it to you and your team to decide. Uh, do pay close attention, though, please, when you're declaring these objects to um, to their visibility. I'm going to declare a data set. I'm going to declare a couple table adapters. And then inside my form load, I create an object uh, of the report. So I've got a customer report. Uh, and just go over here and just, just to ensure, there it is. There's my customer invoices report right there, right? Uh, so I'm going to say a customer report equals a new. So now I'm going to instantiate new customer invoices report. I've got a data set, everything here. I'm going to give you all this code as well. So you have both VB and C sharp. There's my instantiation of the data objects. I'm now filling uh, the data set using the appropriate table adapters. I'm going to assign the data source for the report uh, to the, or at least as the, um, the data set that I've created here in the project, which now allows me to assign the report source at runtime to my customer's report object instantiated at runtime. This is the key thing for crystal reports um, attached to a SQL server. You are using a local copy of the SQL Server database that's going to be moved around with this project. So you've got to use this, this at runtime only uh, connection. Again, slightly different syntax, but as I'm instantiating some data objects, I want to enclose the whole thing in a try catch to catch any sort of buried uh, data exceptions that, that might occur. So I'll take a look at this one. 
remember I added the count on the invoices so so sh and there's been no further formatting done on this I mean this I know this is ugly um, but it doesn't have my title yet doesn't have my name go to the end um, there is a grand total of both of them there uh, but it certainly needs a lot of formatting a lot of prettying up you don't want to hand in anything like this as part of your solution for Roman that's for sure uh, but it has individual group by customer with all of their invoices. Um, there's one with five invoices and a total of all the invoices. We'll get this out of the way. Uh, Crystal reports uh, for use in your VB and C Sharp applications. Uh, I'm giving you the sample code, the runtime code for assigning the report source for both languages. Uh, I'm this PowerPoint, the full version of this PowerPoint, I think there's like 38, 40 slides on it. A lot of it's review on data objects, ADO.net data objects, but these salient uh, slides that I've added on Crystal Reports at the end will be very helpful to you as well. Uh, not the least of which the link that uh, with the, or at least the code you'll need to adjust the startup tag in your, in your um, uh, app config file. Uh, the database all uh, is is uh, attached to the Dropbox, and of course you'll have to install Crystal Reports, uh, SAP Crystal Reports, using the supplied link.